Hi friends, so we are into our probabilistic uh, risk assessment uh, as part of risk based engineering and the topic we are discussing is internal flood probabilistic risk assessment. Uh, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde. Uh, this course is uh, being delivered as part of uh, NBTEL program and uh, uh, let us discuss about uh, how flood becomes um, uh, of course, flood is a concern, uh, but in industry it requires a special treatment. So, flood PRA is carried out at two levels. One is external, internal, because the source of flood uh, can also be internal or external. Uh, heavy rain and then uh, other activities, storm and all that, uh, that is an external, external cause. Uh, the, but then internal cause, any leakages anywhere or any initiating source inside uh, we have a tank, overhead tank and uh, then uh, isolation of, of course, tanks are provided with isolation wall and there are some issue and then it is a internal flooding. So, internal flooding and external flooding, these two, but here we'll, in this lecture we will discuss only internal uh, flooding because uh, at the end of the day, even external flooding, unless until it manifests into internal flooding, uh, the consequences uh, uh, are not there or rather very limited. So, uh, internal flooding is uh, important and of course for external uh, flooding there requires a different approach actually, a uh, lot of data collection and all that. So, let us focus on internal flooding probabilistic risk assessment. Uh, it is a part of full scope PRA, it, that is the importance because if I give a statement of core damage uh, frequency and if I, if I say it is a full scope, so flooding has to be part of it, fire has to be part of it, seismic has to be part of it and that is how is it gains the importance. Uh, and what is the uh, significance like I was discussing internal and external, uh, uh, all of you know the F Fukushima event, there was a, uh, uh, there was a seismic condition uh, in the ocean and that translated into um, a tsunami and that tsunami uh, uh, translated or uh, you know aggravated into um, a flooding condition in the plant in Japan that is Fukushima and th that flooding condition finally resulted into the power failure. So, you can see cascading effect. So, in the new parlance uh, in safety analysis, uh, initiating events are considered, it is there, but combination of ev uh, initiating events. So, if you uh, take the picture of Fukushima, uh, there was a, uh, there was a uh, earthquake uh, in the ocean, then uh, tsunami, then uh, flooding. So, flooding comes into the picture and then, uh, then power, class 4 power failure, that is power failure, uh, in fact, uh, complete, uh, it is called station blackout condition. And then finally, uh, even fire in the plant, hydrogen fire and uh, new, uh, this. Uh, so, so um, from there, after Fukushima, uh, consideration of combined failure has started and often flood also is an initiator where other event combine, like if flooding event is there in power failure occurs, so loop and uh, uh, loss of upside power and flood, that becomes a combined event. And risk significance uh, for core damage level, um, generally it is not, uh, if we take the spectrum of uh, 430, over 430 plants and all, um, one or two specific events are there, but uh, uh, that way the flooding event uh, are less contributing uh, than if we can say seismic and uh, especially seismic and they are also location specific. In Japan, uh, we have uh, seismic as one of the important aspect for the uh, safety consideration. Now, uh, what are the major element of flood PRA? Of course, there are many items which are similar to level 1 PRA. Uh, so, like familiarization, familiarization with the plant, uh, then familiarization with the, uh, with the uh, different flooding system that we uh, have been provided, the different points uh, which are potential for uh, flooding to occur. So, that uh, leads to the initiating event and then um, in flooding, uh, uh, other than the uh, level 1 uh, full scope uh, PRA, uh, the special point is uh, dividing the plant into the compartment and how it is divided based on location, uh, based on the elevation. That means, if one, if one area the uh, flooding is there, 
how it will propagate into other area or how it will not propagate into the other area and uh, how the consequences will be limited or it will propagate into the other area. So, this that is why and for compartment system why we do because there are some compartment like emergency diesel generator set. Now, they are very very important from power failure emergency power failure point of view. So, significance comes from uh, there also and finally, what we do is um, identify the flood uh, measures also because we have to finally uh, like in uh, safety systems we have uh, engineering systems we have uh, counter measure for flood also are there in the plant the submersible pump located in different location. Uh, one more sp uh, special aspect uh, of flooding is uh, every plant has got some capacity to absorb flood. If, uh, if there is a flooding uh, of a certain, uh, certain uh, uh, level then there are some, uh, some uh, like uh, some pit is there in the plant for meant for certain thing. So, initially water will come and collect there actually. This will provide a breather for us to prepare for uh, other areas also where our safety equipments are there. So, um, we have in plant some uh, features uh, which relieves us from uh, at least uh, small flooding event and all that uh, and that will not propagate into the other area. We have to identify that also. So, and then finally accident event uh, uh, analysis and uh, uh, fragility, fragility analysis is part of whether flooding, fire and all. So, fragility means, means components capability to withstand a given scenario. So, what is the strength available for a given stress? So, that is how it is taken as and we will we'll touch upon this, but in flooding this has got a simple meaning it is not a mechanical stress. How the flooding level can decapacitate a pump or motor or any equipment so that it does not perform its own intended duty and finally, it is quantification and documentation. So, these are the uh, event. Now, as I was mentioning combined event. Um, this is rather a very new concept 2011 when Fukushima occurred uh, in all the safety whether it is IAA or uh, NEA uh, they started taking up this point. So, it has got a cascading effect as I told you uh, how Fukushima uh, took place and then operational and maintenance, maintenance availability. So, after, uh, after the Fukushima there is a concept of uh, stress test was uh, evolved and stress test means what is the stresses will be put on the system or plant and what kind of built up resilience or capability is there to fight out those stresses. So, that is why it is called stress test and all across the uh, world uh, nuclear plants uh, they subjected their uh, plant to stress test and finally, uh, they qualified it to be uh, having enough uh, built in capability to uh, address the postulated uh, stress phenomena it could be flood, it could be seismic, it could be any external event and that is how it was done. So, uh, th this requires a uh, readiness on operation maintenance at level 1 and uh, you know th this is of two types one you uh, different segment isolation where various activities availability of the system and uh, what are the mitigating measures that are available how to see its uh, uh, readiness or uh, like for uh, safety system we do periodic testing for these systems also you have to do uh, periodic testing and all that and uh, what is low probability high probability event and design and operational plates and uh, because you know all the plants they have flood procedure. Now, its adequacy or its, uh, uh, its uh, uh, effectiveness has to be checked uh, uh, and it is to be validated. So, and then plant emergency flood measures whatever they are provided and the guidelines uh, which are available for handling this and whatever technical specific document says talks about this. Okay. So, this as I mentioned most of the procedural points uh, they are uh, they are in line with level 1 PRA we discussed in our previous lecture uh, or even uh, in module A also uh, the fault tree event tree analysis uh, the new element comes is uh, structural. Now, uh, the way structural analysis is re relevant for uh, seismic event uh, it has got different connotation for flood like here it is like uh, uh, flood uh, against the flood we create different barriers. So, we need to our plan need to ensure that these barriers they will withstand uh, those uh, uh, those flood levels and uh, and and keep the compartment definition intact. So, that is the meaning of this. So, it goes to a uh, civil component of uh, the plant. Now, uh, how external flood the, this consideration should come actually uh, because how it affects uh, the internal event 
uh, any leakages from any boundary and the external uh, uh, source can uh, can affect the contribute to internal sources also and it becomes an initiating event so that consideration should be there as i to told you the external flooding is, is a uh, one part but finally it unless until it manifest into internal flooding uh, the plant is generally uh, we can say we have to shut down the plant and all but generally it remains in the uh, safe state and plus plant specific design aspect also we have to address uh, we might have a flood list available from the generic sources but our own list also we have to generate and keeping in view the plant conf configuration that talks about the different compartment uh, it's a routing in terms of drain points who are uh, which are leading from one area to another area uh, its capacity and then uh, flooding capacity also like uh, how uh, what is what is the rate worst rate uh, that we have to consider that plant uh, water can come into the uh, plant now uh, a simple example of uh, flood compartment modeling uh, we will discuss here and this is a very uh, uh, very simple uh, presentation uh, of this uh, compartment we have a uh, here and here we have one motor pump located and this pump is basically a uh, emergency pump let's say uh, it is meant for our core cooling and it has to be available all the time unless until there is a decision to do on maintenance and adequate redundancy is there um, we cannot take this pump out now uh, let us assume that uh, in the plant uh, there is one potential point there is a pipeline running in the plant and it comes from a overhead, overhead water tank of course there are walls and all that but then let us take the worst case scenario here and if the uh, there is a leakage here and the water start finding in the area and the compartment submergence level starts so here the fragile point is our junction box motor junction box so unless until water level remains up to the uh, foundation level there is no problem but then uh, the, uh, this is all uh, risk assessment is a uh, is a game of modeling conservatively are having ensuring the adequate margin so the moment uh, it touches the foundation of the pump uh, there should be a signal that water is, uh, level is uh, there in the area. Uh, it could be closed circuit TV, it could be surveillance, it could be some level monitor uh, on this uh, provided over here. So uh, uh, once we get an indication, action can be taken. Of course, uh, action can be taken the moment rupture has taken place because the f fire jet uh, you know, which is uh, put there and there are uh, these areas are meant by a human. So uh, we'll come to know. But then the size of the leakage will determine how much time is available for us to take an action. Normally these pipes are all uh, sturdy pipes and uh, they don't fail. But then uh, uh, PRA is all about postulation. So if the pipe fails and uh, water jets comes here and here and it should not reach the junction box or it should not reach the uh, shaft level because bearings are affected. And this is how we model uh, how this uh, there is a threat. So how to handle this uh, scenario? So other pumps will be provided not in the same area or, or same elevation if they are a part of redundancy. Okay? Or if, uh, there should be a uh, wall uh, which can be closed immediately. It could be motor operated wall. It could be. Uh, so these are the arrangements and they are there in the plant. Uh, but then there, there can be combination of failures uh, and that can lead to such event otherwise these events are not possible sort of thing. Now um, this is one thought process goes that was uh, I was explaining. Now flood system surveillance. Now what should be surveillance as we said uh, that uh, for every event there should be a surveillance program. So uh, then uh, we have the uh, in state of pumps, flood pump located in various areas so that water will find and it will get into one sump which is at the lowest elevation. So the, the elevation itself will dictate the water to flow in the sump. Now there are pumps available, submersible pump. These pumps have to be checked periodically for flow and the current they take, the noise level, the suction filter condition, wall. These are routine things actually but it has to be meticulously checked, point number one. Check the integrity of all the flooding potential sources and make the arrangement for uh, if any uh, any uh, any leakage is there 
to arrest those leakages at least by in a planned manner or to reduce the uh, free, uh, you know quantum of leakage uh, because if even if we reduce the quantum of leakage uh, a lot has been addressed actually and uh, reporting and corrective action program any deficiency noted in the plant has to be uh, reported and of course uh, staff training forms one of the uh, one of the uh, critical component of uh, our ensuring the uh, uh, safety on a sustained manner so then uh, flood fragility analysis flood uh, fragility analysis uh, if i have to put in a simple word uh, how flooding occurs in a compartment um, likelihood of that thing and then how the flooding flood the probability of flood level reaching the weakest point or the uh, the level where the equipment uh, is not able to uh, so uh, so this is how the flood flood level itself dictates the uh, fragility of the uh, component if a component simple word if a component is submerged it should not be so what, how the what difference uh, it will make on a level 1 full power prs uh, pra and uh, how we can use that pra for modeling a flood event whatever areas are have uh, have gone above critical point they are not available for so those components have to be uh, taken out they are not available their unavailability is one and the, uh, uh, if you re remove those uh, uh, combination of component uh, it has to be demonstrated that the there is no risk to the plant so or if it is a, there, if there is a risk uh, it it should be in acceptable range so this is all uh, we uh, we try to find out the probability of damage then uh, vulnerability uh, uh, potential damages monitoring and then uh, flood fragility uh, curves are uh, uh, developed uh, uh, you know so these are all basically part of that i have taken this from a source uh, type set uh, that geo so this is the source for my this slide actually and now um, now why i am showing the inventory even though you have discussed there there are some specific things which are not there in our uh, level 1 pra is coming here there is a let's say a, a, a pipe failure initiating event is a pipe pipe failure uh, which is uh, 300 mm line and something has called so the moment there is a failure the alarm will come in control room what so this alarm will come why because there are area beetle trace beetles are nothing but sensors are put on the floor or in strategic location so if any water uh, trace or even uh, even humidity also is there in that uh, uh, in the probe then the probe will detect either humidity or the water so this this is the first one to give us an indication then uh, area we have to locate which area it is there so if we do that also correct and then uh, since it is a flooding event it is safer to so the manually reactor will be shut down um, by the control room staff and the diagnosis of uh, structure uh, rupture rupture uh, how it has happened or whatever and then uh, the emergency measure because every flood area has got a uh, provision of clamps and all that so if the clamps are put the the rupture location can be uh, can be immediately uh, immediately uh, corrected and uh, these preparations are the uh, regular feature of the plant and then uh, whether the ice source have been accumulated so the, uh, uh, in flood the sequence could be uh, 1 2 3 is okay but then uh, what we do first and all that we have to see and accordingly the consequences will be there so even the flood scenario we could explain through uh, the so now uh, here if i want to isolate the wall if i do in 10 minutes i can i can be this is also forms part of the 10 to 15 minutes my i can be saved if i take more time and if the uh, quantum is um, uh, quantum is less uh, i have more time so it depends on from what source the the area is getting flooded and how fast i can um, uh, st i can um, isolate the source uh, from my flood area uh, that will dictate the term that is what is the message from this uh, inventory now uh, results of internal flood pra uh, they, are, they are they are basically the spectrum again as we uh, as we know a monte carlo simulation different uh, accident sequences and then the um, 
we, we will get a probability density function uh, and the uh, confidence bound, uh, lower bound, uh, upper bound, this is called UNC means uncertainty. So lower uncertainty bound, upper uncertainty bound, median value and finally we get a statement of cumulative core damage frequency uh, for internal, internal flood. So you can see the low figure that is 5% uh, confidence uh, figure is uh, 1.3 to 10 to power minus 8 and uh, the higher side it is 2.1 to 10 to power that means it is 95% uh, uh, bound uh, for this thing. So if I have to tell uh, median is a more realistic but this is 2.1 Tesla minus 6. If you take, it is very, uh, very conservative estimate that we have taken into account in our uh, risk analysis. And then overview of flood PRA. What we discussed now is uh, internal flood, external flood could be source of this. And uh, then spatial modeling aspect, we have divided the plant into different areas. Then we checked what are the source from there, how uh, the flooding can be contained or it can be diverted into a safe location, it is called uh, uh, sums and all that. So that, uh, and then accident analysis, fragility analysis, list of initiating event, event uh, development and est uh, estimation of core damage frequency. So this was a um, uh, recap of this lecture. Thank you very much.